हेल्थ इज वेल्थ जो तंदुरुस्त है वो धनी है डिफरेंट लैंग्वेजेस डिफरेंट कल्चर्स इनसीएट द सेम प्रिंसिपल नाउ डेज वन मे फाइंड इंडिविजुअल्स हुआ पेइंग अटेंशन टू देयर हेल्थ इन टर्म्स ऑफ रेगुलर एक्सरसाइज एंड प्रॉपर डाइट बट द स्टेट ऑफ हेल्थ ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन द सोसाइटीज हेल्थ and to discuss this question a complex question with us we have in the studio today dr h v sardesai a most widely known and respected physician in pune dr sardesai at the outset could you give us an idea about um, the state of health prevailing in india vis-a-vis -vis developed nations of the world yes it's rather <coughs> an unfortunate uh, situation that uh, diseases which we may consider communicable and therefore have a social bias have a very high incidence in our country i'll give you the incidence of typhoid fever which is exceedingly common here <coughs> in uk united kingdom you have one case of typhoid fever per million population in the year whereas in india though the incidences have varied the minimum incidence is 1000 and maximum incidence is 20000 cases per million in one year and this necessarily is due to the fact that there is inadequate sanitation take the example of neonatal tetanus the tetanus which is there in newborn child almost 100% fatal only three cases of neonatal tetanus were detected in the entire europe in the last year and they too came from countries which were not really advanced In India, last year we have had, we have reported cases of 87 cases of neonatal tetanus. We have reasons to believe that many other cases were not reported, and therefore the incidence is exceedingly high. So also tuberculosis, which is a, a very big problem in our country. In our country, it is estimated that roughly 17 million cases of tuberculosis are going on at this moment of time. and there would be twice that number of people who have had the infection but have not had the disease yet so that roughly you might say that one third of population in our country has been either affected or is suffering from tuberculosis and these figures are staggering that's an enormously high figure very high um would you regard would you would you say that this is a social problem not an individual one and therefore society has to do something about it very much so there is we all have our personal health but we also have a social health and a society is made up of individuals and unless each and every individual is healthy the society is not healthy and vice versa unless you are a part of a healthy society you cannot remain healthy i mean the entire environment may be polluted and however much you may try to be healthy in yourself you may get infections you can get infections from the water that you drink from the air that you breathe the food that you eat and all kinds of pollutants will affect you even though as an individual you have taken every possible care to remain healthy dr sadar sai we have definitions of good health on a personal level could you give us an idea about uh, a definition for social health you know a society where a person feels secure for future and a society which has got high standards for uh, entertainment is considered a society which is healthy so security for future meaning thereby that if i go out of my house for some work people in my house must feel certain that i'll return back home without any difficulty and i won't have accidents on the way or nobody will murder me or kill me or in the houses i can sleep very contentedly that nobody is going to steal or come and make a robbery in my house if i were to have a society which is unhealthy then there will be theft and there will be robberies and there are rapes and there are murders and everything is one part of society is uh, working in a in a manner which is which is not in the interest of other portion of the society and taking advantage of each other these are all signs of unhealthy society similarly as i said the ability to entertain oneself the classical example is when the romans went for war with every battalion they used to have a hunchback who used to walk with it when the um, roman soldiers got tired of walking the general would order the hunchback to run he couldn't run so they he would be whipped and he would fall down he would cry he would bleed and as he was doing that the entire roman soldiers would laugh at it and say they get get a vigor and march with greater force even to read this one feels a terrible thing and one would feel what sort of an entertainment is this 
but we need not be so judgmental. In our own mind, we also take great pleasure in ha some harm that is seen on the TV screen, on the cinema. There is so much cruelty and so much of uh, 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 kind of uh, harm which is being done to each other and people seem to be delighted at it. This, this is not a sign of a very healthy society. A healthy society must have good literature, good entertainment, good drama, good cinema and so on and so forth. Society is understood in different terms, communities, clans, etc. But many people would say that the essential constituent of a society is the family. Now, how far does the family play a role in determining the state of individual's health? To a very great extent, because all habits of physical cleanliness begin in one's family. Take a simple habit of washing your hands before you take your food. The human hand is so made that the palm of our hands has a skin which is impervious to many bacteria, viruses and things. So whenever we are moving around, we come across, we, we touch ro railings of uh, star staircases and we come in contact with a number of uh, uh, things which are undesirable. They would not affect us as long as they are on our hand. But without washing our hand, we take the hand near our mouth and eat without washing, that gets transferred onto our mouth. Unfortunately, the lining of our lips, throat is not so strong, it picks up the infection very quickly. And therefore, what is termed as a droplet infection, like ordinary coughs and colds are transmitted this way. I have a cold, I sneeze, my sneezing produces droplets which go and affect all parts around. Somebody else comes, touches that part on the table, goes home without washing his hand, eats and he gets the cold. Cold is all right. What happens to more serious diseases? What happens to chicken pox? What happens to other illnesses like shingles, you know, what we call as herpes? They are all illnesses which come like that. Meningococcal meningitis transfers, is transferred like that, that a person who has this kind of an infection by his coughing, sneezing and even talking keeps on spreading droplets all over. We touch them, they are on our hands, we do not wash our hands and eat it. So the society, the family is the unit where the child is taught the importance from the beginning. Wash your feet before you come into the house, a very vital importance because there are kind of worms, take the example of hookworm. Hookworm gets entry into the body by the foot, on the foot it makes an entry and then gets into the body. So if you wash your feet when you are coming from outside, then at least you have prevented an incidence of hookworm which is otherwise very serious illness inside. So also the way to behave with each other, the ability to share because the family is the place where you learn these aspects in society. Otherwise, as a child, the attitude is that I want everything and I want it now here and everything. Now, if that trend is not controlled in, the, in that, then the same thing will happen in the adult life. That man will say, I want everything, I want all the money, I want all the authority, I want everything and I am not prepared to share it. So, family is the basic unit of a society. Well, individuals are asking for all kinds of things nowadays, but one suspects that they are putting a lot of their money and time in wasteful and even harmful habits, uh, which only affect them personally, yes, but also it has a social dimension as a relation of social cost. Uh, in the same vein, if a society puts in a lot of money for individual benefit, uh, would it make a substantial difference to the state of the health of that society? Both factors are very important. I mean, if we were to take simple things like eating supari and eating tobacco and smoking and taking alcohol, even in a city like Pune, it is estimated that 20 lakhs of rupees are spent every day in 24 hours on only harmful habits. So, if, a, if people in Pune were to simply say that one year, we are not going to spend money on something which harms us. We are entitled to have our entertainment by reading books, we can go to good cinemas, we can uh, take picnics out, go to natural resorts, do exercise, play games, whatever else you want to do, you are welcome to do, but not smoke and not drink and not eat supari. Then you would build a dam around Pune every year in one city can do that. <coughs> Other way around, supposing <coughs> there are dumps of uh, all kinds of uh, dirt around and flies are there and cockroaches are there and they come on down here. It, it was a matter of great shame to know that in the later part of 20th century, a disease like plague should visit India because it can only come through insanitation. And the illnesses which are referred to in the past like typhoid, like TB, like neonatal tetanus come only through insanitation. Take the example of uh, pollution of uh, the car exhaust. I mean, an individual can hardly do anything about it, but the state and the authorities could do quite a lot to improve the sanitation in that respect. 
Is the state of poor health in India reflected in the expenditures in any way? Very much so. Now, last year, 1998-99, we had 16,000 pharmaceutical companies in our country which have produced marketable products and sold 18,000 crore rupees worth of medicines in one year. Now, if you were to see that staggering figure and if you were to look at the number of absent absentisms for work, loss of man hours, uh, illnesses, hospitals are absolutely full, no place to get admitted, all doctors dispensaries are, are overflowing, this uh, would represent a very poor performance. We, a very dramatic change is needed in this. Uh, which would <coughs> imply that there is a, a political will. In that sense, the political dimension of social health seems to be crucial and the role of governments. How could they do better to give some instances? You know, vigilance is needed. <clears throat> For example, it will not require too much money to have the garbage cleared or it will not require too much money to be sure that there is not a uh, lot of uh, noise pollution everywhere. Uh, I am told that Singapore is one of the cleanest parts of the country, of the whole world because if you were to throw a litter on the road, your thousand, uh, a fine of 1000 pounds is put on you straight away. Now, that sort of a monetary deterrent has placed that place absolutely clean like a mirror. If Singapore can do it on a smaller scale, why can not we do it? We should be able to do that. Two basic things are needed to keep good health, a portable water supply and a proper sewage disposal. If these two things are attended to, I think 50 percent of our illnesses will go just simply as, as is this. So, the solution mm. is simple if one pays attention to it. Very true. Dr. Sadesai, there is um, a point of view prevailing that there has been a substantial change in the quality of health between uh, the last generation and this one um, due to various factors including migration and lifestyles that we are adopting in urban centers. Is it true to say that health was much better in the last generation than today? And if at all it is marginally true, in which areas is it true and not true? It was true to some extent, but I can't say it was true wholly. It was true to this extent that those who lived, lived a better life because they were healthier. But what happened to all those who did not live? Our life expectancy at the time of our independence was only 32 years. Today, it has gone to 68 years in India and in the rest of the advanced countries, it has gone to 73 years. Uh, we are catching up pretty fast. And people used to die with simple things. Uh, you know, when the influenza epidemic came in 1918, it killed lakhs of people around here. And so also, we had epidemics of smallpox, epidemics of plague, epidemics of every conceivable disease, killing thousands of people. That does not happen at the moment now. So, in that way, we are better than what it was in the past. But our lifestyle has been, has left much to be desired. We do not do enough exercise. We eat foods which are not desirable. We are loaded with worries and anxieties for which you do very little. And we are completely unaware of our responsibilities for social health. All this has made matters worse. The population has expanded. Cities are crowded. Roads have traffic uh, which are uh, very conducive to accidents. And uh, in every sphere of this nature, the illnesses are rising. You spoke about uh, anxieties and apprehensions and in society. Um, have healthy societies or western developed societies shown a high incidence of depression? How does it compare with the Indian situation? Maybe in terms of suicides or? As a matter of fact, the most advanced countries like all the Netherlands, Switzerland and other places where state looks after your survival. So, you are not worried at all about it. So, worries which are faced by us of how is how I going to have the night meal today is no more applicable to them. But despite that, the incidence of suicide is highest amongst these countries because they lack in what we call as the spiritual health. By spiritual health, we mean it's a part of our social health that we have to be aware of the purpose of our life. Why are we doing everything? And fortunately for us, we are good at this aspect of our of our health. Uh, our uh, mental makeup is so made that we know that our life has been a gift from God, whatever is your philosophy, and we must make the best of it. So, to do that, we will not easily throw away our lives like what people abroad would do. 
And the incidence of mental illness is exceedingly high in western countries, mainly because the interpersonal relationships are bad, the societies are, the families are crumbling down and they do not have anyone to talk to, the person would feel that nobody cares for me. And then the incidence of these illnesses is rising, their competition is very high and therefore depressions and anxieties are, are rising. But we might catch up with them unless we are careful, we must be quite sure that we look into our, our mental health very carefully. Which, which suggests that the family is once again a very important constituent in retaining healthy social health throughout society. Very true, because in the family you can ventilate whatever your anxieties, frustrations and disappointments were uh, in when you are facing the society and the problems that you face, you come home and talk it out, but now you have no one to talk to. All physicians, doctor, say that prevention is better than cure and our advice to you is that try and not get into problems. Could you tell us something about the individual and the social dimension of this very briefly? Well, physically speaking, we would say that we must remain clean, we must do exercise and follow a good diet. Mentally, you must ventilate your thought, communicate with whatever you have, look into your mind and see whether your expectations were realistic or you had expectations which were totally unrealistic. Socially, you must be aware of your responsibilities as a social citizen. You're, you do not throw your dump anywhere and you do not make noise which is not required. You do not just celebrate by crackers for every little thing that happens. All these are uh, important and together we can make a very good society. So viewers, good health is not merely an individual question it has a social dimension as well. If you see a garbage dump lying unattended, it could be the source of a serious illness for you. Dr. Sardesai, we thank you for coming here and sharing with us some important issues about social health. Remember, what you do affects society. What society does affects you. So next time when you have some garbage, don't just dump it out anywhere in the open. You could be harming somebody else, but you could also be harming yourself. Mm -hmm.